In a far corner of the world lives a mob of kangaroos, engaged in battles for power and control. Go. Oh, oh, there, there. Here he comes, hunted by a fierce predator, the dingo. Ah, ah! Plagued by hard luck and misfortune. Just relax, girl. It takes strong will, support, and determination to be the Eastern Grey Kangaroo. Be an insider in the creature world. That's the mission. The Krat Brothers. Dropped in remote regions to live with the creatures. Through their eyes. On their turf. By their rules. Be the creature. We're here on the island continent of Australia, traveling along the snowy mountains of the southeastern coast. This is the land of kangaroos. In fact, there are more kangaroos here than people. Almost 19 million people, over 50 million kangaroos. The kangaroos live in all kinds of habitats, but we're going to a secret valley here in the snowy mountains to live with these eastern gray kangaroos. We'll be part of the mob and see the life of the kangaroo through different characters at different life stages. We were closing in on our mob, the Snowy Mountain Mob, but before joining them, we had to make a pit stop to experience the first stage of life, birth. A kangaroo is born only 30 days after it begins to develop. And it's really more like what you would think of as a fetus. Eyes closed, hairless, the size of a kidney bean, and he's faced with a massive climb. He has to travel eight inches to his mother's pouch. That's 16 times his body length. Comparable to Chris scaling this cliff. 90 feet up. Let's give it a shot. Oh, man. All right, I got you here. Let's see if he can climb as fast as a joey. Go! I've got a safety rope on Chris, I'm belaying him. The Joey has nothing, it's all up to him. And it's do or die. The Joey falls, that's it. Chris, you gotta go faster, we're gonna make it in Joey time. After one minute, the Joey's already halfway to the pouch. And to make it even more impressive, the Joey does all this blind. Just feeling for handholds. Now I'm using four limbs, but the kangaroo Joey only uses arm strength. At two minutes, the Joey is in, makes it to the pouch. The Joey can make this climb in two to three minutes. That's astounding. Come on, Chris. And inside. Whew. Four minutes. Four minutes! The Joey does it in two, not even close to the Joey. But now, he goes straight for that nipple, which is right there inside the pouch. He'll latch on and continue his development. The pouch life stage, it's what defines a marsupial mammal like the kangaroo. Age, zero to six months. So on to the next stage, where all the action happens in the secret world of the pouch. Hey. <laughs> Maybe we should talk about this, Chris. With Martin in the pouch, we headed out to meet up with our mom. Great scenery. <laughs> How's it going in there, Martin? I have no idea where we're going. <laughs> I know, it must be crazy. Moving around, traveling around, you can feel the bumps, but you have no idea where you're going. That's life for a Joey for the first seven months. Whoa, whoa. watch out for the bumps, whoa. hang on, man. <laughs> At least there's some rhythm with a kangaroo. Whoa! Got me nuts. All right, here they are, the roos. I brought Martin to meet the mob that makes its home in this special valley. Expansive grasslands, snowmelt feeding a river down below, surrounded by forests, sealed off by the majestic snowy mountains. Hey, Chris, where are we going? Oh. All right, Roos. We got another kangaroo for you. Ready to emerge. 
age seven months. <laughs> Let me out of here. <laughs> wow. This would be amazing to a Joey. The Joey's head first pops out of the pouch at about seven months of age, getting hit with a blast of light. The eyes blink, and as the Joey gets used to, to this new, brightly lit environment, he starts focusing and seeing a lot of green. And then you'll start noticing these creatures. Hopping around. Little ones playing. Big ones kicking at each other. This Joey has a lot to figure out about being a kangaroo, and he has to learn to avoid the dangers that are always lurking. This is our mob for the trip, and we're gonna learn about them just like the Joey does. So who's who? A mob or a group of kangaroos can be anywhere from two or three kangaroos to a hundred or more. Mostly females like your mom, her relatives, and one large adult male who has breeding rights over all the female kangaroos. Right over there, standing seven feet tall when he's reared up almost 200 pounds, he's twice as big as the females. We'll call him Boss Man. For now, the newly emerging Joey will stay sitting tight in the mother's pouch. Won't make excursions yet. But he is checking out some of the foods his mom is eating. He'll nibble a little bit on grass. <laughs> but his main food is, of course, milk that he still gets from inside the pouch. So the Joey will stay in the pouch for nine months, only peeking out and enjoying the ride. Age, nine months. Finally, the Joey is ready to step out of the pouch completely. And we are about to meet a Joey at this life stage. Up, oh, he's struggling his way out. He wants to come out. And there he goes. He's out. Look how big and lanky his feet and legs are. We called him Bigfoot. This is almost like a second birth for a kangaroo because now he's able to step out into the world rather than just peek out from the mother's pouch. Whoa. <laughs> they always seem a little awkward on those legs, almost like the spring in the legs is just too much for their little bodies but they're starting to harness the power of those legs and hop around pretty well. Whoa! <laughs> this Joey's young enough that he doesn't want to stray too far from that pouch. He likes the security of the pouch and uses it as a home base for his forays. Chris, what? Look, look. Whoa, something's got them running. They are hopping fast. What's going on? What's going on? All the kangaroos took off. Could be a dingo in the grass. Martin, you see anything? Bro, he's hurt. This youngster has a limp. Did you see that? His right leg is injured. He's very vulnerable to dingo attack. And he's trailing the rest of the mob. Only a dingo could have set the mob off like that. They were all hopping off. They were all getting out of there. Uh, wow, dingoes around here. That changes everything. <laughs> they move like phantoms through here. Through the tall grass, they could pop out any second. The dingo, introduced to Australia by humans from Asia thousands of years ago. This has become the top predator of the kangaroos. Here, in this valley, they hang around what we call the kill zone. The tall grasses which hide their presence as they cruise along looking for opportunities. And the kangaroos and us are right in the middle of it. Looking for a yellowish dog. 
But before we could get a glimpse, the dingo was gone. So if dingoes or any other danger is near, how do the kangaroos alert the rest of the mob? Well, they do it by one foot stomp. And then they continue, see, they listened. A foot stomp means flee. And for Bigfoot, it's all about getting safely to the pouch. That is, until he can hop well enough to escape by himself. A human starts walking at around a year old, give or take a few months. A kangaroo joey starts learning its hop and really getting into it at about nine months of age. And here's what he's got to master. The kangaroo hop, you put your legs together, pushing your weight onto the balls of your feet and moving your weight forward and hopping. And all the weight of their body is being held by two toes, only two toes on each foot hold up all their weight. It's the only thing touching the ground. We never get enough of the hopping. You guys are good. Here you go, boom, springing. Look at that. Leap, 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 leap. <laughs> go, Chris. Oh, man, jeez. This is impossible. I keep wanting to move each foot independently like we do when we walk. But kangaroos don't do that. They keep them together, working as a unit, getting the power from each on a single hop. Tendons, not muscles, are the key to the hop. When they land, energy is stored in the tendons like a compressed spring, ready to be released with the next hop. Now, I automatically try to use my arms to counterbalance. I swing them around. They don't need it. They've got the tail. The kangaroo is totally balanced on that lever. Unbelievable. And you can really see that tail pumping. That gives them power, too, when they leap. Oh, boom. Look at that springing. Do, 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 do. As his legs get stronger, the Joey will be able to go 35 miles per hour. Uh, oh. Not me. Whoa. I feel like a total chump trying to hop like a kangaroo. We can't even touch you guys. You've got it down. Are you coming to see me? Hi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's when sitting around and doing nothing pays off. The amazing kangaroo is just one of thousands of creatures that exist nowhere else but in Australia. Down in the valley, emus, the large flightless bird of Australia. These birds can't fly, but they can run and fast. We have to be careful not to spook them. Right up this way. Second only to ostriches in bird size. This creature is a giant of the avian world. They're moving through this burnt section of forest, picking up seeds, berries, little new shoots of different vegetation types. They've got a pretty broad ranging diet and they just keep moving quietly through the forest. Gotta move through here quickly and quietly. It's so hard to follow these guys. They're constantly on the move, keeping just out of range. Oh yeah, there they are. They're starting to get used to us following them. Those insane eyes. They're, they're so reptilian, so much like dinosaurs. I love them. We got a great look at this very prehistoric looking giant bird of Australia. Early the next morning, Bigfoot was out and busy practicing his hopping. Still cloudy. Yeah. But at least it's not raining, huh? Wow, he's doing great. He's got some quick turns. 
If you're a young Joey, you're practicing using your legs. You're going off on excursions away from mom, and the circles around mom will get bigger and bigger as her confidence builds. Oh, collision. <laughs> Again. If they get the opportunity to get out, they love it, bouncing around, jumping for 15 meters away, then 100 meters distance. They learn quick, these joeys. They're natural born hoppers. And then his hops take him around. He bumps into an older sister. He bumps into an unrelated female. They never seem to welcome another joey near them. Hopping around, bumping into things, bumping into other kangaroos. <laughs> Heading back to mom, then setting out again. But Joey's looking for a pouch on that male. He's not going to find one, though, because male kangaroos don't have pouches. <laughs> back to mom. She's the one with the pouch. Chris, over there. What? Bachelor male. Up, they're up. Oh, yeah. You ready for this, Bigfoot? You're about to get a lesson in kangaroo kickboxing. Here we go, a little build up to a sparring match here. Oh, and there they go, yes. Oh, and a kick, nice form. This kickboxing is a battle between males for dominance and breathing rights for the mob. Oh, another man moves in. Oh, oh, he's going on with that guy. It's a three-way match. Male kangaroos in the heat of battle. Oh, oh, he's going on with that guy. Third guy moves in. He goes for the neck. Oh, he's got him in a headlock. Oh, 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 he came in strong. Sneak attack coming from behind. Scratching at the face, kicking with the feet. Oh, oh, I heard that though. The tail for leverage. Oh, nice move. Nice kick. Ooh, nice. He's got him, pushing him backwards. The third guy is cleared out. Float like a butterfly, kick like a roo. Bigfoot, you getting all this? Oh, yeah. He's getting into it now. Bigfoot is learning the ropes. He's kickboxing mom. Oh, it's getting frantic now. Look at these guys. Oh, yeah. And look, we got him. Oh, he pushed his head down, pushed him down. Oh, oh he keeps going for the head. Oh, but that guy escapes. Wow. Looks like it's too much for this guy. Yep, he's out of here. End of match. He's gone. You won. The prize, confidence and experience. These guys weren't in a battle for control of the mob. They're young bucks in a heated practice bout. And Bigfoot's still practicing too. He'll keep doing that for the next couple of months. His kickboxing career has just begun. His mom will be his first sparring partner as he solidifies some of his moves. And as he grows up, he'll take on bigger and bigger contenders. Age, 11 months. Pouch life is coming to a close. When you get close to 11 months old, you can hardly fit in a pouch anymore. Your feet are sticking out, your tail's sticking out, your head's sticking out. It's time to go. And when it's time to go, it's tough love. The mother kangaroo suddenly starts pushing you away every time you try to enter the pouch. Like Romp over there, you become a young at foot. But that doesn't mean you're completely independent. You can still follow your mom around. She'll still feed you milk every now and then, but you're starting on your road to independence. At this age, you'll notice the top buck following your mom around. That's because your mom is ready to breed again. Boss man knows it, so he's following her around, waiting for his chance to breed with her. Oh yeah, boss man is very interested in the female over here. And she's probably almost ready to breed. He follows her around and sniffs her every now and then, trying to sense the hormones that indicate that she's ready to breed. 
The hormone is in the urine, and he is getting right in there. He's not gonna stop at anything to know whether she's ready to breed or not. <laughs> he shakes his head. I can't tell if he likes it or not, but that's part of being a kangaroo. He doesn't want to miss out because if he misses a cue, one of these young males is going to come in and breed with one of the females of the mob. And that's not what he fought for. He worked all his life to get to this position, to be the top buck of the mob. Ever since he was a Joey, he practiced his kickboxing. He went through all those sparring matches with the young teenagers and probably had a major battle with the previous top buck to gain access to these females. He only has maybe two, usually more like one year as the top buck before somebody else comes in and ousts him from the position. Now, his focus is to breed as many of these females as he can for as long as he can. This is the most important time in this guy's life. And this becomes a life mission of every male Joey out here, to reach the top position of the mob like boss man. And they usually... Oh, 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 oh. What happened? Ah, oh, my knee. Oh. Uh, what happened? Oh my, oh, my knee twisted out. Hop oh, down, I twisted it. Is it broken? Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, 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 Martin had taken a bad fall and was injured. Ah! Uh, it, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard. Can you move it? Does it even the bend whole thing, at all? It just like I felt it pop right there. How'd you uh, do it? Just hopped down and landed funny. Just went out that way. Shoot. I think it's the anterior it cruciate. Just, Probably it's the same thing. I mean, it feels exactly like when I, ow, like when I did it in soccer. It's weak. I can move on it. It's, but I, I gotta get ice. I gotta, I gotta keep the swelling down. <sighs> yeah, I, I'll just go. I'll just go up the mountain a little ways with the truck, and get some snow because you don't want to miss these two guys. <sighs> Feeling like that limper we saw. Well, radio me if you need anything. All right. Ah, oh, this is gonna, I'm gonna be out. For, I'm not. I knew from a previous injury, the first thing to do was to keep the swelling down, even before going to a hospital. So I headed up to the mountains. Ah, yeah. Perfect. All right, this is what I need. Gotta ice it down. But you know, it makes you wonder, how do the animals do it when a kangaroo gets a leg injury or any other animal, basically the swelling happens. Legs shuts down and they become very vulnerable. Any predator will see that weakness in a second and that is when you get into a lot of trouble. No matter what creature you are or where you live, this is a reality. If you're an injured wild dog in Africa, you have to become even more wary of lions and leopards. If you're an injured banded mongoose, you become easier pickings for the marabou storks and the monitor lizards. And as a kangaroo here in Australia, you have to become even more vigilant of the dingo because predators love injured prey. Ah! Age 18 months. As a joey, you're about to go solo, fully independent. See what Martin's doing. <laughs> Martin, I'm gonna go look for the males. All right, I'll get it. Okay, I'll go outside when it stops raining. <laughs> okay, how are you doing? Oh, it hurts. It sucks. Oh, man. The 18 month old in the mob was called Rookie. Now that he was no longer with his mom, he was starting to hang out with the other young males. All right. All right, we've got a couple of young, tough guys going head to head. No longer are they sparring with their mom or their older sister. They're starting to come together. Evenly matched young males starting to want to spar with each other. These guys aren't serious. They're just practicing their moves, 
getting ready for the big event. Oh, a takedown. He took him out. <laughs> when he's older, he'll even start to scent mark like that one. That testosterone must be kicking in. That's the classic male scent marking pose. Scratching the ground, rubbing your chest on the ground. More than 18 months old, fully weaned, on his own, and starting to act like a real buck kangaroo. Don't let a big guy catch you doing that, buddy. As he gets bigger and starts showing more of this male behavior, he'll start moving away from the main mob. There's only room for one big male. He'll now hang out with other males in bachelor mobs until he's ready to compete for a mob of his own. And now that he's independent, Rookie has to be more aware and alert than ever before, day and night. Ever since I can remember, I've always seen kangaroo during daylight hours. But what do these creatures do at night? That's what we're going to find out. Come on. We last left them. They were just a few meters out this way. Let's see if they're still there. Now, our 18-month-olds, they're out on their own on this night, just like usual. But what are they doing? There they are, the whole mob. Look at this joey right here. The joeys are awake, looking out of the pouches at night. There's our little 18-month-old right there. So as an 18-month-old, fully on your own, no longer getting any nourishment from your mother's milk, you're out here all night long feeding on grass. But dingoes are out here too. The whole mob is alert for dingoes. Dingoes hunt at night too. They're out here prowling around, so the mob is going around doing their thing, but also they are always on alert, no matter what time of day it is. It might seem strange to see kangaroos active at night like this, but kangaroos are nocturnal. They start getting active during dusk and continue that activity all through the night and into the morning. And Dawn brought out a great new creature. Over here. They are one of the shyest creatures here in Australia. Underwater, the platypus is amazing. Duck-like beak, streamlined body, and that beaver-like tail. Swimming with its eyes closed, it can't see anything. The platypus relies on the electromechanical sensors in and around his beak. So it just goes around with its beak, touching, touching, feeling to locate the crayfish, locate their impulses in the water. This platypus is also special because it's one of only three species of mammals in the world that still lay eggs. Now, I can't be out hopping with the kangaroos, but the one advantage with my leg is that it forced me to sit and be still, and sometimes that is the best way to find creatures. Just wait and let them come to you. Age two to four years. When they're about two to four years, the males are sexually mature, but they're still not ready to mate. They just haven't gotten pumped up enough to compete with the larger males. So they usually just hang on the fringes of the mob. And I'm gonna get on my bike and see if I can find some of these males and see what they're up to. Martin would stay with the mob and watch the females. After the night's activity and with the heat of the rising sun, it was time for the ruse to rest, which was fine by me. Gotta keep this going for 48 more hours. <laughs> what are you shaking your head for? It's gonna help it heal faster, I'm telling you. <laughs> The kangaroo hop can get the kangaroo through virtually any kind of terrain, over rocks and logs, anywhere the kangaroo wants to go. An eastern gray can leap six feet high and more than 25 feet in distance. To get where the males like to hang out, I had to go to another section of the valley. 
The meadow across the river was one of their favorite places to congregate. There's males. It's like a training arena. These are all males, kangaroos here, practicing their kickboxing, gathered together for the big kickboxing matches of the late afternoon. This one's interested. So is he approaching each other. Ah, and a little sniff. I'm coming up from behind. Oh yeah, scratching. That's a precursor to the fight. This isn't because they have an itch. This is a ritualized build up to the sparring match. Saying I'm big, I'm tough. You want to go? I want to go. And then they stretch out to full height. Sometimes it seems like they're growing twice their resting size. Oh, he's way up there. And they're off. Almost a takedown, but a nice reverse. Punch right in the face. Oh, yeah, he's raking with those two-inch claws. This guy's definitely got the height advantage, but this guy is aggressive. He even tore out some fur. We'll call this big guy here Glass Eye because he's got some kind of cataract whitish film on his eye. And the little guy, he's tough. We'll call him Scrapper. Glass Eye's going in for more. I'll referee. Don't worry about it. Go. He's up. He's up. Taking all the height he's got. Looking each other in the eye. On the tripod position with the tail. Oh, Glass Eye goes in for the kick. A little jockeying. Look at the use of that tail. They stand on their tiptoes, on the very tips of their toes. And that tail gives them like a tripod to execute those kicks. Oh, nice execution by Scrapper. Their target is that belly. Fortunately, male kangaroos have extra thick skin on their bellies to absorb those blows. And there they go, another round. Yeah, when they can, headlock, headlock. These guys are really going for control of the head. Oh, Scrapper's got it. Arm wrestling. That arm wrestling is so important. They're trying to gain control of their opponent, trying to get the other in a headlock, trying to hold them there so they can deliver a kick or throw them down onto the ground and basically disgrace the opponent. That's basically what would have happened if it wasn't for the great return by Glass Eye. Glass Eye has a much longer reach. Scrapper has to crane his neck way back to protect his eyes. Oh, right on the chin. The important thing for them now is to get good form, get it down, get balanced on that tail, and execute the moves properly. And these guys are doing well. A little more scratching, that means that he might want to go for more. See how he goes. Once you start reading the signs, you know how these sparring matches work. Glass eye advancing again. Oh yeah, he's moving him back, moving him, pushing him. Pushing him against the ropes. Except there are no ropes. Oh yeah. All right, Glass Eye's starting to kick now. The scrapper holds his ground. A kick from Scrapper. Scrapper unloads a few kicks. Glass Eye holds and pushes through. And they're off. Good match, guys. It's a tough match to call, but I'll give that one to Glass Eye by decision. Woo! Pretty crampy in that tent. Looks like we need the rain gear again. Oh, man. Hey, where's everybody going? Martin, right, where's our spook? I see him. They have such good hearing. They all cleared out. 
they cleared out of here. Something spooked them from that direction. There's got to be a dingo around here somewhere. There's something they're not happy with. Joey's going to pouch, young at foot, stay close to their mothers, and everybody watches intently. They're all standing up and looking. They're not relaxed. A dingo tries to ambush its prey, get as close as it can, undercover, and then at the last minute come out, creating chaos and honing in on a single individual. It's quiet, but they know something's around. They know it. Hearing is their most important sense. Oh, there, there, here he comes, trotting this way. Picking up the pace. There goes the limper kangaroo. Wow, that is a beautiful creature. He's picking up the pace, picking up the pace. The kangaroos know he's there. They're clearing out. His chances are so slim at this point because the kangaroos know he's there, but there could be one in the grasses that didn't get the signal that he's around, and he'll flush him out. All right, Limper did it again. Safe from the dingo, the main predator of the kangaroo. If a dingo runs by me, and I'm a kangaroo with a leg injury, I'm in a lot of trouble. Uh, that, and that's what the dingo's trying to do. That single dingo, he's looking for the opportunity to find the hurt kangaroo. If you're an injured kangaroo, you're nervous. You want to just get away from the area. You don't want the dingo to spot your limp because the dingo will cue right in on that and come right after you. Good work, limper. You're hanging in there. Age three years old. If you're a female kangaroo, motherhood has started by now. You have your very first joey in the pouch, and now your focus is to take care of that joey and reproduce as much as you can. That's where they put their energy. As the females get older, they have to take care of three youngsters at a time. An embryo inside them, a young in pouch, and a young at foot. It's an amazing energy drain that she is capable of doing. And that may contribute to the female's smaller size. It's important for the male to be big so that he can be competitive in the kickboxing arena. She, on the other end, has to use her energy to grow babies. It's a huge toll on a female and probably one of the reasons they're so much smaller than the males. Good luck out there. On a ride just before dusk, I spotted something strange. Hey, what's going on? What is that? What is it? There's a kangaroo up here. Are you OK, girl? Oh my gosh, what in the world happened to you? Must be a two to four year old female. Oh no. Can you move your legs? Can you move them? They're limp. Her legs are totally limp. She's not moving them at all. Somehow, she's paralyzed. She might have broken her back somehow. Freak things like this can happen in nature. She might have just been hopping along, made it across the river or something, and then something spooked her maybe, and she ran right into a tree and broke her back. Martin's lucky. He can recuperate, he can recover, he can fix his knee. This kangaroo has it a lot rougher. She has no doctors to go to. She's just on her own out here. It means the end. It'll be dark in less than an hour. The dingoes will come out, and they'll find her for sure. 
she'll have a quick death. She's not in pain. That's the fortunate thing. Just relax, girl. Relax, girl. heartbreaking seeing something like this because you don't know what to do. Do you put the animal out of its misery? Or do you let nature take its course? She's paralyzed. She'll never hop again. There's really nothing we can do to help her. It's all part of nature. This is the hardest part. This is the hardest part to see as a creature adventure. The next morning, we couldn't even see the mob through the fog. There's frost covering the grass, so they might have gone high up on the hill to get out of the frost until the sun comes up, melts off the fog, and melts the frost. It's a bones. Partially eaten spine and hip of a kangaroo, definitely a dingo kill. This right here is the kill zone. This is where we saw him patrolling along these tall grasses. And he made a kill in the last few days. A misty morning in the kill zone, the area where dingoes hunt. Here are more bones. The massive leg bones of the kangaroo right here. A few more minutes of this, and I'll try to catch up with Chris. The kangaroos have probably gone up on the hill, out of the fog, to a place where they can see better in case the dingo comes by. Speaking of seeing, a few just ran right in this direction. This is the time that dingo has been around. They're all looking again. The fog lifted just in time. That dingo's definitely prowling around here. And it looks like the mob's not sure which way to look. Everybody's looking in a different direction, but everybody's alert. Everybody is cautious. Bingo, dingo. But that's only a pup. It's about three months old. No mother in sight. That pup must be lagging behind mom. And there she goes, disappears in the grass. Finally, things have settled down. Now, mothers let their joeys out. Now's the time to relax. Now's the time to let the joeys play. It's getting a little better. I can hop on one foot. <laughs> and I arrived just in time. The bachelor mob had moved into the meadow. Look at all these bachelors. Male, 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 male. All of these are males. All these kangaroos. They're all squaring off against each other, sizing each other up. Imagine taking on one of these guys. I mean, as a male kangaroo, that's what life leads up to. So that's what I'd have to do. Of course, I'd start with one of these younger guys. Okay, a round robin kickboxing match is shaping up here between four kangaroos. We have Bully, Scrapper, The Extender, and Chris? All right, okay, our first two contenders are Bully on the left, Scrapper on the right. Are everybody ready? And there's the bell. And they're up, push and shove and testing each other out here. And oh, oh, Scrapper's off to a strong start, but Bully holds his ground. They are locked up here, trading kicks. Bully's going on the offensive. Pushing, pushing him to the right there. Pushing him, pushing him. Bully is taking charge here. Oh, oh, but Scrapper's coming back. And Extender is in. Huge size difference here, but the Scrapper is all over him, taking the offensive. It's too much. Too much, the little guy is too much for the extender. He's backing off and out. 
So the small guy has one over the big guy. Now he's gonna take on Chris. Setting up. Scratching starts it out from both sides. Getting ready. Warily circling each other. Looking for an opening. There's a kick from Chris. Chris connects, but he'll have to do better than that. He'll have to do better than that to take on that natural born kangaroo kicker. Jockeying, jockeying here. Look out for those claws. Oh, oh, the stare from Scrapper. It's much tougher than I thought. Here's the kick. Oh, a flying Chris. What a blow. One kick, and he is out. You win, buddy. Next guy up. He got me. Scrapper takes it decisively. Oh. We could never make it as Eastern Grey Kangaroos. No, but I wouldn't be a contender as a kickboxer. Plus, my hop is pathetic. If I'm a lame like a kangaroo, would have probably been taken out a long time ago. Kangaroos lead challenging lives. From the Joey's first climb, through life in the pouch, and out into the world. Making it on your own with dingoes prowling. Motherhood, raising three youngsters of different ages at the same time. Training as a kickboxer, up to that big fight when you're battling for breeding rights. This is the life of the kangaroo, with so many more subtleties always emerging. And now we leave the mob, ourselves a little bruised and battered, but with a great admiration for this remarkable creature. If I could just get that double kick down, boom. <laughs> it's going to be a couple months before I'm ready to try it again. <laughs> See you later, guys. It was fun.